So now I was speaking in tongues, so now I wanted to read the book of Acts all over again. I wanted to read everything Paul said about speaking in tongues because once you have an experience, the Bible comes alive. Once you cast out a demon, you can't read those accounts of him casting out a demon the same again. It, it's like, now it's like watching TV. You can actually see it. So <clears throat> Mark 16, 17 says, they shall speak with new tongues. As I studied that, I found out that the word new here means new for this dispensation. In other words, new like they never existed before. They never happened before. And it's a sign that God is doing something new. And so Jesus didn't speak in tongues. Nobody had spoken in tongues before. Isaiah had mentioned that someday they will speak in tongues. He, he mentioned that and Paul quoted him about that. But tongues had never existed before. Usually there's signs that happen at the beginning of what God is doing that's new. So the new thing that he was doing in the earth was the baptism of the Spirit, speaking in tongues was part of that. It's for believers who, who believe. And then as I read it, I, I was confused because it looked like it looked like he's talking about tongues in private, which I was speaking in tongues. I, I knew I could pray in tongues. I had sang in tongues. And he mentioned that in 1 Corinthians 14, that you can sing in tongues or you can pray in tongues. But then I see there's all these verses about speaking publicly in tongues and someone else translates it or interprets it. And, and so it just seemed like a lot of, confu lot of layers of confusion for me. And so I began to really focus on this. And I think the thing that drove me also is I, I, I had friends, I met people who didn't believe in speaking in tongues anymore. And they had a lot of confused ideas about speaking in tongues. And so to try to help them, I really wanted to understand the subject. And, and I, I really began to pray about it and study it. And so what I'm teaching today and tomorrow is what come out of those early studies uh, back in the 1970s and 80s. And so one of the first things that I learned about speaking in tongues is that there are different kinds of tongues, not different languages, but different kinds of tongues. Look at this, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 10. He says that there's working of miracles and to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another diverse kinds of tongues. So there's different, it's old King James language, but it's different kinds of tongues. In 1 Corinthians 12, 28, he also said there are diversities of tongues. And I think where we get in trouble um, is that we treat all tongues in the Bible the same. We treat it one dimensionally that, that all tongues, for example, on the day of Pentecost, it says in Acts 2, 4, that they spoke in other tongues, which are other known languages. There are 16 different nationalities on the street that day who heard them speaking, every man in his own language, and there are real languages. They were known languages, other languages. And most people who don't speak in tongues think that that other tongues is what all tongues is for. And I, so I had a, a friend of mine who said, yeah, when I I, I don't speak in tongues now, I'm not interested in that, but if I ever become a missionary, I'll pray that God gives me other tongues so I don't have to learn the language that I can just speak in Egyptian or whatever language I need to speak in. It doesn't work that way. That's, that's, taking, that's taking one experience, one kind of tongue, and, and applying all the Bible verses to that one kind of tongue, and that will mess you up, that you won't get very far. When it says different kinds, it's actually the same word that's used for different livestock. Remember, in the Old, in the Old Testament, it would say there are different kinds. Um, in the book of Genesis, that there's all different kinds of livestock. There's different kinds of trees. It's really talking about different kinds. Uh, so in Acts 2.4, they spoke in other tongues. Uh, a guy named Harold Bradison, who is one of the first guys to really uh, 
experienced tongues as a for our generation and 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 really ex try to understand it and write about it he said that he started speaking in tongues he was a i think a lutheran and he was speaking in tongues and he happened to be in washington dc and he saw he looked around he said i want to try this out on people and he saw a very exotic looking dark skinned woman very well dressed woman and and he stopped her on the street in washington dc and he said uh, he just started speaking in tongues to her and she's kind of shocked you got a complete stranger coming up to you speaking in tongues and 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 he finally stops and he says what am i saying she says, what do you mean what am i saying she said you're speaking egyptian and he says i am she said, of course you are don't you know what you're saying he said no what do you, and now she's confused he said i'm speaking in tongues like what's in the bible and she said no you're speaking egyptian but it's not only egyptian it's classical egyptian she said i'm a student of classical egyptian so the egyptian they speak now is not the egyptian that moses would have spoken uh, growing up in egypt it there's classical Egyptian. She said, you're speaking perfectly. He said, what am I saying? She said, what do you mean? You don't know what you're saying? He said, I have no idea what I'm saying. She said, well, you're telling me about God and the wonderful works of God in classical Egyptian. And it was real confirmation to him that this was, this was a real thing. That's one kind of tongue. I've never had that experience. Sometimes when I'm interceding, it seems like I go into some kind of Hebrew or some kind of Chinese <clears throat> but I, I've been in elevators with people, you know, of different nationalities, and I'm thinking, I wonder what would happen if I just spoke in tongues and see what the reaction would be. But I've never had the courage to do that or the leading to do it. But that's a kind of tongue. In a sense, I would say I, I've not experienced that. Then, watch with me. Go with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 14, <clears throat> verse 2. The, uh, in the King James Version, so I don't know what all your translations are. Probably there isn't a King James among us. The King James translators, when they wrote out the King James, when there wasn't a Bible word being used, but they, they felt it needed something more, they would put the word in, in italics, showing that they're adding it to the scripture. It's not in the original text. <clears throat> but in, in 1 Corinthians 14, 2, for example, it says that he who speaks in an unknown tongue does not speak to men, but to God, for no one understands him. However, in the spirit, he speaks mysteries. The King James guys realize that that's not other tongues. That's not Acts 2, 4. And so they inserted in, in their translation other, or uh, I'm sorry, unknown tongues. Is that what it says in the Spanish Bible? Um, do you want to compare it like with a classical more? Like, maybe we can say with that. Does anyone have unknown tongues in your, in your Bible? It's, no? I think it's just Spanish, there's a version that says like lengua extraña, which means like a, a strange or strange. Like, yeah. Okay. So um, most of us are New King James or NIV or something else, and so it's not gonna it's not gonna do that. But the I was reading the King James at the time. I'm studying it. It's the authorized translation, and I was struck that the word unknown meant there's a distinction between that and other tongues, which is known languages. <clears throat> so then I found verse 4, 1 Corinthians 14, verse 4. He that speaks in an unknown tongue edifies himself, but he who prophesies edifies the church. 1 Corinthians 14, 14 says, for if I pray in an unknown tongue. So what we seem to have is, Praying in an unknown tongue, not speaking to men, but speaking to God. It's an unknown tongue. It's a different 
kind of tongue than other tongues found in, in Acts 2.4. So I'm already seeing there are different kinds of tongues. Then he begins talking about <clears throat> um, speaking in tongues that needs to be interpreted. Well, I had never had that experience before. And so I thought maybe that's a different kind of tongue and there's different rules for that. It's a different experience. Um, and then there's singing in tongues. Uh, 1 Corinthians 14 verse 15 says, I will pray with the spirit and I'll pray with the understanding. I will sing with the spirit. And I'll sing with the understanding. So if I sang in English, there happened to be singing in Greek or Hebrew, they're singing with their understanding, but they can also sing with their spirit in, an, in, in unknown tongues. And, and that's what I started doing every day. I started speaking in tongues and singing in tongues. 1 Corinthians 13 verse 1 says, If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, and I thought, oh, well, maybe, maybe what I'm saying is angel language. Maybe they understand what I'm saying and maybe they speak in tongues. Maybe they can obey. Maybe when I'm speaking mysteries in the spirit, the angels get busy and they start responding to what I'm saying. So I, I realized that there's different experiences. And as long as I didn't push them all together and, and make it try to try to take everything the Bible says about speaking in tongues and push it in the one mold, if I avoided that, maybe I could understand a bit more about it. And that was a major clue for me that this thing is more complex, uh, more diversified. Almost everything that God does doesn't fit into a one-dimensional mold. There's different aspects to it. And so uh, I noticed in the Bible, like for example, in um, Acts chapter 10, verse 46, and Acts chapter 9, verse 6, these people uh, were speaking in tongues, but there was no interpretation. Acts 19, the, the Ephesians, they spoke in tongues, but there is no interpretation because it's a different kind of tongue. The Ephesians and the Samaritans all spoke in tongues, but, it was a, but they didn't have a translator. Um, Cornelius and his family, they all spoke in tongues, but nobody translated. And... No one understood what they're saying, like we see in Acts chapter 2, verse 4, because there are different kinds of tongues. And that's what's really important to make that distinction. Okay? Is that helpful?